गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः ओम श्री गंगाई नाथाय नमः जय श्री गुरुदेव जय श्री दादा गुरुदेव आई वेलकम एवरीवन फॉर द सिद्ध योग सेशन वी आर रीडिंग गुरुदेव श्री रामलाल जी सियाक रिटन बुक फर्स्ट बुक ऑन प्रेफरेबली इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सिद्ध योगा इन वेरी मच डिटेल वी हैव ऑलरेडी रेड दैट बुक द रिलीजियस रेवोल्यूशन इन द वर्ल्ड यू कैन वॉच ऑल दोज इलेवन एपिसोड्स कैन अंडरस्टैंड बेटर वट इज सिद्ध योगा वट इज द फिलोसफी ऑफ सिद्ध योगा बेनिफिट्स ऑफ सिद्ध योगा हाउ यू कैन गेट इनिशिएटेड इन द सिद्ध योगा एवरी डिटेल इन दोज पर्टिकुलर लेसन्स इलेवन सेशन्स हाफ एन आवर ईच सेशन and that book you can get as a pdf if you give me the comment box you need that book and share how do i share with you i'll share the link of that book okay now we are reading gurudev's another book which is more important uh, once you into the siddh yoga and you want to know more about gurudev as a comforter which jesus said that i will send a help from the father the comforter i will send and how gurudev is a comforter how the prophecies made by all the scholars foretellers and all the prophecies in the bible ki bhavishwaniya in the prophecy uh, all the prophecies made in the bible are all mentioned here and how they are uh, resemblance how they have resemblance with gurudev ramlal ji siak's mission and his life that's what we are reading out and what is the purpose of shri gurudev's life and mission and that is also we will we are reading out in this book this book name is prophecies from the holy bible so yesterday we were reading the chapter name third chapter which is destruction of da of da so hum is the aim of life that means to get rid of rid from the slavery slavery of the slave to get rid of that status we read the Uh, very beautiful story uh, it was given in this book we read that and today we will complete this complete this lesson this chapter and we will start from where we left yesterday i'll just recapture it the last paragraph of yesterday set from the yesterday sessions just give me time so last paragraph yesterday we read is we are completely working in a quite harmonious way with the laws of nature and as such no power on earth can raise any obstacles in the path of our journey to accomplishment of our highest development that this rise of the dharma will never be stopped nobody can stop this okay next let's start many of the indian sages and seers had long long back made several prophecies about our bright future and all of them had vividly depicted the events that we would come across not only in our own time but in the future also long years of our subjugation to the foreign yoke had however so badly shaken our self self respect that we are not even prepared to believe in their in their prophecies now however great the sages and yogi yogins might have been had might have been and therefore i would prefer not to mention anything about them here since one and all have unwavering faith and unquestionable belief in the prophecies made by even ordinary foretellers from the west and other continents i would therefore like to quote some extracts from them in which all of them have said that by close of the 20th century india would be the leader of the world in the field of religion and spiritualism references relevant to indian scene alone are mentioned here under this particular paragraph is you know tells us the condition of the darkness Uh, we are surrounded within the india that we have such a great yogis sage uh, but we do not believe their prophecies their teachings 
because we are following the western western culture if any ordinary person uh, does a prophecy about india or anything we 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 take him very seriously because he is from the foreign land but on our own land on india bharatvarsh great sages have said something but we do not care to give any pay any attention to what they said that is how much darkness so this particular paragraph shows gurudev says what i will do if i will tell you the great saying by great uh, philosophers sages saints yogi yogins from our land you will not believe so i will not waste my time so what i'll do i'll quote those foretellers those prophecies which are made by the foreigner foretellers which might impact on you so he starts with first mr kiro a british astrologist in his book world prediction published in 1925 had said that before 2000 and after the great catastrophe catastrophe a new order civilization would spread throughout the whole world and a man from india would bring about a revolution of knowledge number 2 mr vegilatin an astrologer had said that during the period 1971 to 1981 of the later half of the 20th century he w- the world would experience natural calamities like excessive rains drought devastation caused by f- uh, falling meteorites meteorites and explosions and eruption etc therefore a new civilization based on peace and brotherhood would originate in india and after crossing over the barriers of caste province and the country it would spread to all the parts of the world to create an atmosphere of peace and happiness number 3 mrs jean dixon a woman astrologer from america had said that before close of the 20th century there would be a great massacre of the human being during a germ warfare after this a new civilization based on spiritualism would originate probably under the leadership of an indian coming from a family with a rural background and it it would send off the wars from the world forever it would send off the wars from the world forever mr anderson an american astrologer had said that mankind would witness a massive massacre of human beings before the close of the 20th century in between a new civilization under the leadership of a religious rustic indian would come into being he would prepare a constitution based on the principle of one language one flag and one human race and spread throughout the world the message of morality generosity service of humanity and love by the year 1999 this prophet would impregnate the entire universe with religion and happiness and peace for the coming thousands of years number 5 mr gerard kreis an astrologer from holland had said that as a result of terrible war before the close of the 20th century existence of several countries would be erased from the face of the world but a great man from india would tie the whole world with the humanity in a single bond and destroy violence disunity immortal immorality trickery etc from the world forever and always number 6 mr charles clark another american astrologer had said that by close of 20th century indian would become more powerful and overcome all the other countries of the world in the field of development of science but recognition of her status would lie specially in her religion and philosophy which the entire world would adopt this revolution in religion before the year 2000 ad would exercise a great influence throughout the world and the mankind would be obliged to take the spiritualism mrs boriska a woman astrologer from hungary had said that before the year 2000 in an atmosphere charged with violent conditions murders and plundering and killing human virtues would be developed 
into an everlasting form by an Indian prophet as a result of his successful struggle against materialism. This spiritual person would have a very large following of the common people who would convert materialism into spiritualism. Number 8. Dr. Zulwan, a French astrologer had in his prophecy said that after 1990 AD, European countries would start quickly leaning towards the religious civilization of India. By 2000, by 2000 AD, the population of the world would be around 640 crores, 64,000 millions. Revolution of the religious knowledge emanating from the land of India emanating from the land of India after destroying atheism would cover the whole universe like a like a tempestuous storm as an organization the followers of that great spiritual man would by their Atam Shakti self power firmly entrench in no time their influence throughout the world number nine Mr. Nostradamus. Another French astrologer had said that after military revolution throughout the world, only few righteous people would make it a pleasant place. And their world and their world famous greatly prior leaders born either at the end of 20th century or in the beginning of the 21st century. In some countries of the Orient would tie the whole world in a bond of unity, of brotherhood and goodness. Number 10. Professor Harari An Israeli astrologer had said that a, divinely, a divinely inspired great man from India would make before the year 2000 the roots of his spiritual revolution durably strong by his humanistic views and the whole world would be obliged to hear his thoughts. Most of the states in India would be placed under the president's rule. But thereafter, the leadership would ultimately be passed on to the piously valiant people who would be depending on a religious organization. Number 11. Shri Anandacharya from Norway. In his prophecy, had said that by and by India would assume leadership of the world in industrialism, industrialization, religion, and economic field. And its science would be recognized by the entire world. On, these are the prophecies now about Shri Gurudev. On the great day of days, the 24th November 1926, Maharishi Shri Aurobindo could attain to the Siddhi of the Supramental. Shri Aurobindo's sadhana on this day culminated into an assurance for the descent of the overmind. The descent of the supermind. Almost in a prophetic tone and tenor, Shri Aurobindo had said that the supreme truth, the supreme reality, or the truth consciousness descended in the human body form with its quick and full evolution. With its quick and full evolution would appear before the world by close of the year 1993. There is a small change I would like to make because in here in this particular sentence in this particular paragraph there is one line which just I wanted to correlate what is written in the Hindi so I'm hmm. here uh, once again I'm uh, just reading out that line it is written Shri Aurobindo's sadhana on this day culminated into an assurance for the descent of the overmind. The descent 
of the super mind these two lines comes together but there is a difference between this he assured culminated into the assurance that the descent of the over mind descent of the over mind he will make ready people for the super mind he will make people ready for the super mind uh, this this should be the so here it is written assurance for the descent of the over mind the descent of the super mind so he will make the people super mind and then almost uh, in a prophetic tone and tenor shri rivindu had said the supreme truth supreme reality and truth consciousness descended in the human body or body form with this quick and full evolution would appear before the world okay so uh, krishna is not super mind he is blissful so those who will be super mind can have the yoga with the blissful krishna so descend of our mind descend of uh, krishna being in a physical form on the earth is called over mind this over mind will prepare the world the people for the over mind and the over mind can have yoga with the anandamayi krishna blissful krishna so the purpose of descension of krishna in the physical form being an over mind to prepare us for the super mind so we will become the super mind so we understand ourselves and then we are ready to conjunction for the conjunction for the yoga for the plus with shri krishna who is blissful so if you see the seven layers the seven sheets of the body annamaya kosh pranamaya kosh manomaya kosh uh, vigyanamaya kosh this is super mind fourth sheet and then anandamayi from the fifth sheet on the soul the fifth body you can say anandamayi body that is where the yoga starts and this is called anandamaya kosh chittamaya kosh satmaya kosh three layers you have seen shivji put three layers on uh, his forehead anand chit sat so this is the god's riyan which is in the heart but you you see it over here your chetna ascend over here so you are ready for the yoga with the god with the krishna being in a state of blissful being in a bliss being in a state of bliss you can have you can really we call yourself a yogi the yoga starts from the agya chakra when a person is into the blissful stage and we can we can reach to the blissful state only if our development our transformation from mind to super mind and that is not possible without the help of shri krishna himself so shri arvindo descended the shri krishna's divinity into the physical body and call it over mind okay chalo now he says in the present time daso da so hum attitude dasa daso hum attitude of slavery tendencies riyan supreme in the world prophets are the servants of god and their followers are their slaves sanatan dharma is the creator of so hum but there has been a sharp decline of late in the knowledge of spiritualism knowledge of the spiritualism of the vedic ages and the rate of degeneration of this knowledge has not been arrested so far and therefore the spirit of regeneration of this knowledge needs to be taken up in its right earnest now the beginning although has already been made not only has the process of disappearance of the darkness started but we have also reached to the to a stage of the dawn savita deva of the gayatri mantra the sun god the brilliant light of the divine knowledge is about to rise therefore in place of the dasa dasoham tendencies we will have to spread the divine light of our fundamental nath vritti because without it the world peace will always remain a subject of fiction of the mind the present tendencies we are surrounded by and living under will not be acceptable to the world and as such 
we will be left with no option but to recognize our original form. This is the demand of the time. The predestined arrangement of the nature. The tempest of change that is hurtling, just hurtling around in the closing stage of the 20th century will jeopardize existence of many a culture of the world. The new and the narrow polarization that is taking place between different nations and religions of the world may one day become the cause of annihilation of the world. In this context, Maharishi Sri Aurobindo had said almost prophetically that the divine knowledge that our rishis of the ancient of the ancient had gained was once again returning back to us and that the grace was to be gifted to the world by us therefore the world is looking towards india as all its attempts to establish peace total peace here have not only been proved to be futile once but even its unfailing and invincible powers the many the money power and the man power have also miserably and totally failed in their efforts to bring about peace here on the globe the last one of the powers the mental the mind power remains to be experimented on india since time immemorial and for ages has been scoring victories with the help of its unerring weapon the mind power and by it she will be doing treatment of incurable diseases of whole of the humanity in this context maharishi shri arvindo had said next step in evolution which would re, which would re, raise man to the higher and larger consciousness and begin the solution of problem which have perplexed and vexed him since the first began to think and to dream of individual perfection and a perfect society this is still a personal hope and an idea an ideal which has begun to take hold both in india and in the west on forward looking minds the difficulties in the way are more form, formid, formidable than in any other field of endeavor but difficulties were made to be overcome and if the super if the supreme will if the supreme will is there they will be overcome here too if this evolution is to take place since it must proceed through a growth of spirit and the inner consciousness the initiative can come from india and although the scope must be universal the central movement may be hers it is in the foregoing paragraph the difficult nature of this work has been beautifully and convincingly described by shri arvindo if there is a general awakening of the nath vritti in the heart of every indian it would then become certain that this work can be completed with full success years of subjugation have dealt a severe blow to us there has been no perceptible change in the general condition of the average indian and this therefore has led to increase in their despondency we may presently appear weak because of the effect of nature's law of rise and decline but before close of the 20th century we could once again enter into the era of our golden age what maharishi shri arvindo says in the lines that follow need consideration follow lines that follow need consideration he had said god desires that india should become a real india and not carbon copy of europe you search out all the sources of energy within you and then you will be victorious in all spheres you need not develop like other countries and the nations nor do you need to suppress and trample over others like them you have to rise so that you can make the whole world rise on the day of declaration of india's independence on the 15th august 1947 Shri Arvindo had said we are not preparing ourselves only for the change in the form of the government we want to build a nation politics is a very small part of it we do not want to confine ourselves only to politics social organization religious discussions philosophy 
literature and science the most important for us is the religion all such things and in addition to these so many other things which are covered by the definition of our religion there are certain great rules for life principle for human evolution and a storehouse for the spiritual knowledge all these elements are there in sanatan dharma to protect it to disseminate it and become its living example in india's duty the foreign influence is responsible for the decline in religion in india sanatan dharma is not only a group of principles and religious conventions as long as it is not accepted as a part of life in in the smallest and the biggest things in our daily life may they be politics commerce literature science personal conduct or national policy in its former form it cannot succeed nothing can be understood about attaining of true independence unity and the greatness and the greatness nothing can be understood about attaining of true independence unity and the greatness of yoga unless one enjoys their real ananda bliss the true bliss by functional methods indian philosophy of yoga is a functional method for establishing a direct relationship with the supreme being the culminating point of knowledge and science is centered in him who still has an immeasurable amount of knowledge and science in his storehouse to give to the world prophecies made by mr charles clark mrs boriska and shri anand acharya who are all foreigners details having been furnished earlier so that indians cannot be accused of bragging support the above views explicitly so powerful uh, words by shri arvindo and very clear declaration uh, how the change should come and what he has done for us uh, really to evaluation it he is not just telling us he is not just you know Uh, be making a prophecy that this will happen that will happen he really worked over it shri arvindo really worked on it and he it started when uh, he was in alipur jail and krishna the conscious the super conscious visited him and uh, you know gave him uh, the directions the order that what what is purpose of your life what you should do and he did the same there is a uh, something which is which you know um i like it very much those lines when uh, shri krishna asked shri arvindo what you need you did so much for the human being human kind you asked for the biggest uh, gift for the humanity for the earth and that and it should you remember tell this that i i have asked the biggest uh, biggest thing for the earth for the development for the human being which which are which which nobody ever could have you know asked bigger than this this is the biggest thing i have asked from the super consciousness for the human being so in reply shri krishna said what do you want in reply he said shri krishna said i need nothing he did not ask anything from the shri krishna being he he became the most respectable sage and the great 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 person being Uh, ever born on the earth who who initiated uh, our uh, changes he, though it was you know initiated long back but he was the main um, important part of it and shri gurudev ramlal ji syag who descended down as a krishna he did um, what shri arvindo asked for so in return he did not ask for anything then krishna said i'll give you the gift and the and your gift is i will give freedom to india on your birthday shri arvindo's birthday is 15th august and india got its independence on 15th august 1947 shri arvindo fought for freedom of india and he got it but once he completed his main objective of life he got indian freedom india's freedom as a gift from krishna this is this is so much deep 
uh, into my consciousness that we saw we look at uh, many people those we believe did lot of sacrifices for us for the independence but they are a silent warrior also though shri rindo uh, in 1906 he was uh, uh, he was uh, he he they rose in 1905 uh, they bal dar bal dar ganga dhar tilak shri rindo lala lajpat rai they all uh, they before they came like you know they they were the storm they had very clear idea about you know the the full independence this swaraj is my right and i must get it uh, that was their slogan and uh, bal gangadhar tilak it was a slogan of bal gangadhar tilak and rishi arvindo said about the two maha mantras first was vande matram i uh, vande matram means ma ki vandana worship of the mother so mother land we must worship our india as a mother this is a maha mantra this is a mantra which will liberate us from the slavery of uh, foreigners the english british and there will be another mantra he called that is the sanjeevani mantra that will also liberate us but it will the sanjeevani mantra will liberate us internally from the bondages we are into with the darkness that mantra the sanjeevani mantra which will liberate us from the cycle of life and death and it is yet to be revealed he said that time and gurudev came as all the prophecies made in the book that he will come uh, the last decade of the 20th century shri gurudev ramlal ji syag started his mission to make people aware to awake everyone as rishi rishi rinder said first thing is to be awake have to be awakened then the real work will be done so gurudev started awakening people from the 1990 year 1990 so a decade before the 2000 years completes since then he did his uh, work every every possible manner every possible way even he went to the israel america for the awakening of the people still he is awakening he said my photo will not die it will keep continuing doing my 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 body may die because body has a limitation but being a guru being a master i will not die my consciousness the super consciousness which is present everywhere will keep doing my work and it is doing when he left his body in, on 5th june 2017 even after that many people are awakening with just mere his voice listen they are listening the sanjeevani mantra the maha mantra which rishi rindo said yet to be revealed the shri gurudev revealed that mantra to the world in 1990 and he opened that mantra to everyone on 2009 when he said i have given this mantra to everyone for the humanity now nobody can stop this because i have spoken it in the open to everyone anyone who will listen this mantra in my voice will be awakened the one who will who will meditate on my picture on his forehead will be awakened and will be saved from the life and death will be liberated from the circle of life and death the work is going on the mantra the second mantra the maha mantra is in the world so all of you those who are watching this session no matter at what time you are watching this session how many years later you watching this session i welcome you on this session and i ask you to spread this word this siddhyog guru syag siddhyog tell everyone tell everyone that this is a mantra that will liberate you from life and death liberate you from the darkness liberate you from the diseases all kind of diseases the real disease is not what puts you down physically what puts you down mentally or the spiritually the real disease is the disease by which we keep coming back and taking birth again and again in different forms different species that is the disease so we need to liberate from the karmic diseases from the karmas that is the real disease do not count your physical disease your mental disease 
is a setback is an obstacle it's not do guru siyak siddhi yog do the mantra chanting as much as possible and everything will be taken care by shri gurudev ram lal ji siyak the divine consciousness has descended for all of us for all of us we must believe in guru and must follow him sincerely okay so this is for the today tomorrow we will meet again at 8:20 at indian time till then jai shri gurudev jai shri